What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel. I'm your host. And in this episode today, marking the one year anniversary of Sales Remastered, I'm going to share with you how to win a sale through a second voice. Go a little bit deeper. I'm going to share with you how to come in after an agent was unable to successfully close a prospect and you being the second voice, how can you come in and persuade them to give you a second shot or actually give you the business after telling the original loan officer who attempted to sell them um, that they want to go ahead and go with you after all. And so it really is selective on the wording. This is really going to help you if you get creative with it. Meaning maybe you have someone on your team who's kind of like a um, like a loan buddy, right? Like a, like someone who does your second voices. Maybe it might be a female or maybe it might be a male that you lean on for prospects that you feel could use that feminine touch or could use that mas- that masculine push. You know what I mean? It, it's it, you have to be emotionally aware with your prospects, know what pushes them, know what motivates them. And in all reality, I think every company has what's called a shark tank. And a shark tank is a collection of leads that prospects either slipped, forgot to call back, and it got swept from their queue, or simply they inactivated it because they are not as strong as you are. They are not practicing their craft and studying their art like you do. And so we as a sales agent, we have a choice. We can wait for leads to be delivered to us or we can get creative and start to hunt for those leads that deserve our time. The difference between between chasing and attracting is just knowing where your time is best spent. And I'm gonna share with you where the lowest hanging fruit is if you can muster up the courage to actually pursue that type of lead. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, this type of lead requires that you call out to them. I know that might be foreign to some of us watching this, you'd be like, but D, my phone don't call out. I want to let you know your phone calls out. (laughs) And I want to let you know you don't have to wait and rely on the dialer to pay your bills. First off, let's take a couple steps back. I digress. Allow me to explain why this message is going to be truthful. And, and, and helpful to you today, how this is gonna really help you understand your game and understand your craft and enable you to, to get creative with the resources that you have in front of you. So that way you don't have to go throughout the day upset that the CSRs or the customer service reps transferred you a lead that didn't even wanna talk to you. I wanna remind you that those customer service reps are just like you and I. They're just trying to get their numbers on the board. They're trying to move up the ladder just like you did. And so in the process of, they're going to forward anything that seems like a potential lead. Keep in mind that the resource or the source or the department that you rely on to cater you those those special leads, those Glengarry leads, regardless if it's an outbound, regardless if it's an inbound, a marketing, a mailer, an internet, whatever type of lead it is, if you are relying on a customer service representative, it does not mean that we rely on them to check their boxes and do their diligent job and we put our paycheck on the line because of their thoroughness or their diligence, their experience. What we do need to appreciate them for is that they connect us with a live voice. And if we're having troubles with 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 persuading that live voice, that contact, that engagement into a sale, I have an alternative for you. That alternative are the leads that were unable to be sold. Now, initially from the outside looking in, you may think those leads are trash. You might not give it any time of day because it says inactive. But I wanna share with you that some loan officers make the decision to not pursue or inactivate a lead because simply they are emotionally drained. And if they are emotionally drained because they bring in luggage and past drama into each and every single call, or if they didn't have the energy to pursue and craftfully persuade that prospect into into giving you business or giving them business, then I'm gonna show you how to pick up from where they left off. And so it does really matter with what objection they use to justify the reason as to why they didn't proceed. And so today, fortunately, I actually have a speaking event with, uh, with one of our new hire class. It's our senior customer service representatives and they're just about to graduate to become a loan officer. They've asked me to come out and talk to them about objections. 
and I'm, I'm going to, of course, document it and I'm gonna share it here, so please stay tuned. If this is your first time visiting Sales Remastered, hit that red button that says subscribe or hit that thumbs up logo that says like page. Follow Sales Remastered on any social feed that you're already on. If I can give you a meme, a written quote, a written blog, a video, an audio, whatever piece of content or material that you can find that gives you that extra boost of motivation, it gives you that clarity and it gives you that that ground level vibe, right? Like that, that we are in the trenches together. I'm not speaking anything foreign to you. Anything that I've ever shared on this channel is not outrageous. It's all humble and, 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 and honest, right? It's, it's sharing with you that, that what you're experiencing and what you go through, we all went through it. And this is just how we're gonna overcome it, starting in this episode where I share with you an alternative resource on how to pick up leads that others drop. And so as I had mentioned, it is important with what objection they have, but there's a few things that stay tried and true and these things are what you can do going in if you decide to chase a lead that your company or your team or that loan officer was unable to sell. And you're gonna pick up some of these techniques and start to fuse them in with your other lead types. And so there's a few things that I always pay attention to if I ever do a second voice. I do a second voice for my team all the time. Now, now I wanna share with you though, of course sometimes they buy into that managerial title. And, and that could also be a reason why they push in my direction. But before I became a manager, I used to do this in the Shark Tank. And before I used to say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm the supervisor of so-and-so agent. My opening line was, hey, I'm, I'm just doing a quick courtesy call. That's it, didn't even announce my title. And it worked just as effectively. And what I paid attention to were certain things because keep in mind that these applications, they should, if they've already been pitched, they should already have some sort of data, some sort of information on them. And what I notice is that most of the time, those that are inactivated didn't have any information on them. What that meant was that the loan officer dived in right in the very first objection, you and I being so experienced, we know what that first objection was. That first objection was, what's your rate? I just want the lowest rate, I want a free loan, I want it done tomorrow. And so that agent could have opted to just jump right into pricing and qualifying and quoting rates because again, they're not as strong as you and I are. They don't understand the intricacies and the details that need to be focused and exposed on. And so what I'm gonna share with you is how to pick up those details. So if you go into a lead as a second call, it should always start something like this. Hey, Jim, this is Daniel. I'm just doing a quick courtesy call. Looks like you spoke with Jason. Jason asked that I do a second review on your file. We worked up a proposal for you. He understands that I'm doing a campaign within your area and asked that I reach out to you. I have an idea and I want to run it by you. I'm actually meeting with my manager later today. I'm going to ask him and present to him with my other clients your file. And my intention is to see if I can help deliver some of these savings and some of these incentives your way also. But before I go meet with him, I just have a quick question. I'm going to email the results of my meeting to your email on file. Looks like it's Jim Jones at AOL.com, is that correct? Okay, good, I just emailed you and you now have my direct contact information. I would expect that this meeting takes place before end of business day today, so if you don't hear from me today, you should hear from me tomorrow. But if I give you a call, it means that I'm able to deliver you value. I'm able to deliver you the solution that Jason was unable to deliver to you. If you don't hear from me, then you'll know that we're unable to, to deliver that offer, but in, in, absolute, in absolute least, you're going to get a, an answer for the time you've spent with us thus far. Jason is a very professional agent and he, he appreciates the time you've given to us. He appreciates the fact that you allowed us to pull your credit and work up a, an option for you. And because of the time he spent and the time that you spent, he asked that I give, it a sec, I give you a, a, a call and do a second review over something that he may have missed. And I think he did. So give me a call back or you know, let me go ahead and work this up and when I bring this, uh, and depends if, you, if you're leaving a message, right? Sometimes you're gonna have to leave a message. But you understand how the message goes. And so say, say um, you know, sometimes I get files put my way and given a second review and I'm unable to do anything. However, in reviewing your file, I found something and I wanna run it by you. 
I think I have an idea that may work for you, but before I run it by you, let me just ask, what exactly did Jason miss? What, there, there had to have been a, a, a result or maybe a number that you were looking for that Jason just didn't provide. Now that we have this one last chance to deliver a solution to you and ensure that you didn't waste your time, I'm going to see if we can get that. What was that number? What was that result you're looking for? Now this opens them up to give you brutal honesty, right? And you're going to find a lot of times they're just going to they're just going to say that oh, it was pricing it was the interest rate. Now keep in mind that the prospect is just answering because of the way they they perceive the information. And so when they tell you the reason why they pass or because we thought about it or because we found a different lender that had a better price, right? You have to, that's going to quickly tell you how Jason probably pitched and presented the offer. Most of the time that we call in on deals that, that were unable to be sold on the first time around, typically are being lost on price. And the reason for that is because a lot of the agents that give a call back and present their options, as I shared with you in some of the content here before, is that they go, hey, this is Daniel. I got a couple options for you. Please grab a pen and paper. Option number one, your interest rate is 4.5, but that's no closing costs. It saves you $999 per month and it pays off all of your debt and it changes your life and it lets you walk on water and your FICO is going to be 851. I know it doesn't go that high, but your credit score will go that high. And, and, and so there's just a tremendous amount of value, of course, with that four and a half, but because of the way they delivered it saying, hey, option one is four and a half. The, the, the minute you, you know, you ever heard that saying, like, you lost me at four and a half. It stands true with our prospects, meaning that when you say something they don't agree with, their only focus is on what they don't agree with. And so you could have <clears throat> delivered the absolute best sales pitch right after you said four and a half. But the thing is, you lost them at four and a half. And so we have to understand the placement of certain information to ensure that we keep their attention span and not have this bias filter, not have this filter that's going to push us away and think that we're trying to take advantage of them, but a, but a, uh, an attention that really, you know, appreciates the information that we give to them. How do you position them to do that? Well, what we do is we have to recognize that some agents are just not as strong as you and I. Some agents just are not as crafty and as creative as you and I. And I, and, I, and I invite you to take the challenge to expose that fact. When you come in as a second voice, there's something magical that happens. They're able to speak. That When I say they, the prospect. The prospect is able to speak and tell you what their honest opinion was. And you're going to find that their honest opinion was maybe the loan agent was rude. Or maybe the loan agent didn't call back in time. Or maybe the loan agent said one thing that, that steered them away. Whatever the reason is, they're going to share it with you. And when you get that opportunity to identify what it is that they missed, you are now going to get creative and deliver it in a different way to ensure that they are aware that they can achieve the goal that they believe they missed. Now it just comes up to your creativity and how you deliver that pitch. And if you want to know how to deliver that pitch, stay tuned to Sales Remastered on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Snapchat, on Twitter, wherever your attention may be, whatever social platform you have an account for, I am certain I'm there already. Just go into the search bar, search hashtag Sales Remastered, and you'll see every single recent post and all posts at all, for that matter, that has ever been on that page. And I invite you to take a peek at it. If you like the content, follow. Do me one solid. Hit like. Hit the thumbs up. Um, you know, hit a share. Share the link. Email it to your LinkedIn page. Um, share it on your Facebook page. Get the word out that this brand is now a year old and it's a year strong and there's just so much more to come. So I hope you enjoy this video. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what your takeaway was. Let me know what you could use today. Let me know if this can help you create an alternative lead source. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.